Hello students. Uh, in this video I want to talk about literature a little bit. Uh, so you might want to get your literature book. You won't need it a whole lot today, but you do want to get uh, this worksheet that I put in your folder about the difficult journey. Uh, it's a little reading passage. I'm going to talk about that today, but I'm doing this because on Friday you're supposed to have a test uh, in this class. Okay, um, Grammar and literature uh, but the literature part will be different than you're than you're used to. It won't be like answering questions as normally, but you'll kind of have to read a passage and answer questions after it, kind of like the literature worksheets that you've done. But uh, I think this will be good. Be, it'll be simpler, uh, but it'll be a little bit more thought provoking. You'll have to do a little bit more work as far as reading. Um, but I think it'll be good. Uh, two reasons. This will be a little bit simpler, and since we have not been together to go over our literature book and the stories, I'm sure many of you don't even remember the stories that we were going over before break, and or maybe even the unit that we were in. Um, so I think this will be better, and it'll give you a chance to apply some of the knowledge that maybe we've been going over in literature. So um, first of all, I'm going to review some terms and some things. And uh, they are in your literature book, so if you want to pause the video and, and go get your literature book, I'll give you some page numbers to go to. You can do that now. Otherwise, we're gonna, I'm looking at page 35 in your literature book. Um, 30, page 35, it talks about the elements of a drama specifically, but this is just elements of really any kind of story, okay? Um, here's the main ones that I want you to focus on, especially for this worksheet and for your test uh, portion, uh, ledger portion for your test. Uh, the characters, the exposition, the rising action, the climax, the resolution, and the lesson. Um, uh, many of these terms they're defined in your book on page 35. Um, you probably, everybody knows what the characters are. It's the people in the story. Uh, the exposition's the introductory. It's explaining who the characters are, what they're doing, where the story is gonna take place. Rising action is the events that are uh, leading up to the climax. It's the things that this is happening, so this happens, okay? Um, the climax is, of course, the most intense, the most exciting point of the story. It's where everything is leading to. Um, and then after that, of course, we have the resolution. Everything calms down. You have the, the happy ending, hopefully, right? Uh, and then, of course, the lesson. This is not in your book, but if you remember on the literature worksheets, you always have to try to find a lesson in the story because I think that's, uh, that's important, whether it's something to do or something not to do. It's always good to kind of be able to try to find something to take from the story. So just kind of to review these these aspects really quick, uh, I want to talk about uh, one of the famous stories I think that everybody will remember, the story on page 211. If you want to jump to that page in your literature book, you can real quick. Page 211, the million pound banknote. Okay, I think hopefully most people at least remember the title or maybe some of the characters. Uh, so that's first, just to review these different elements of a story. Remember the characters in Million Pound Banknote, uh, Henry Adams, he was kind of the main character, the, everything was happening to him. Lloyd Hastings, if I remember what he did. He was Henry Adams' friend and um, that's basically it. Um, the two brothers that gave Henry Adams the banknote and Portia, of course, the girl that Henry Adam falls in love with, da 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 Okay, in the exposition, Henry Adams uh, kind of gets shipwrecked and, you know, he's going to England and everything and it doesn't quite work out the way he planned. And that leads to the inciting force, which is not on the board, it's not something you have to know, but the inciting force is when the brothers give him the banknote, okay? And after they give him the banknote, uh, it goes into the rising action, everything. He's in England and he's uh, putting everything on credit and he's going to the stores and everybody's treating him nice because he has the million pound banknote. Okay, uh, and of course he meets Portia and he meets Lloyd Hastings again. So a lot of stuff's happening. Rising action is kind of one of the biggest parts of the story, but it all leads to the climax of the story. 
okay? And the million pound banknotes, if I remember what part that was. It's kind of, in the book, it says it's when Portia reveals that she's um, one of the brothers, I think stepdaughters is what it was. And so, but in the resolution, they get married, live happily ever after. Yay. And uh, a lesson, you can, you know, just kind of think about whatever you thought that was. Um, but that's basically what I'm looking for, okay? And so what I want you to do now is I want you to get your The Difficult Journey. Make sure you have that in front of you so that we can talk about this together. Now, I'm going to ask you all to pause the video right now and read this little passage real quick, okay? It's not even a full page, and I don't want you to go any further in this video until you have paused it, taken like two minutes, and read the story. So go ahead and do that. Okay. If you've unpaused it, I'm sure there's still some people that did not pause the video to read the passage. So, those of you that did not listen the first time, I want you to pause the video right now and read the passage, okay? It is not hard, it's not long, and you're not going to be able to understand what I'm talking about if you haven't read the passage. So, second chance, pause the video and read the passage. All right, one more time. If there is anybody that still has not read this passage, pause it, read it. Otherwise, we're moving on. Okay, by the way, thank you to everyone that did actually read it the first time I asked. All right, here we go. I'm not gonna read the whole story. I'm just gonna talk about these elements, okay? And so you can kind of follow along. If you've read the story, and you're looking down there at question one, list the main characters, okay? Uh, you can probably go ahead and write them down in the, in the blank down there if you know what they are. The person that this story is about isn't exactly named. Um, so you can call him the narrator, uh, the person traveling on, on, the, on the trail, um, however you want to say it, um, his family, uh, the people traveling with him. Uh, but just so you can kind of somehow define who it is, I would just say the narrator. He is the, the main character, the person that it is talking about. That was easy, hopefully. Number two, what is specifically happening in the exposition? So I don't want you to write down there the main character is being introduced, okay? Or something vague like that. It says specifically. So what is he doing it's really kind of in the first two paragraphs so if you go back and look up there um, he is it says he's leaving st louis because he heard there was gold in california and so he's he's getting his family to go out to california um, planning that traveling all the way to the ocean we would journey to california um, that's what they had planned to do um, so that's kind of the exposition, and that's what the difficult journey is, okay? So you can just put something kind of like that in the exposition. Number three says, what is specifically happening in the rising action? So that's the main bulk of the next few paragraphs. You can write down some of the challenges that they faced, okay? The first one that I see is in the, fir is in the third paragraph. I'm going to start reading the third paragraph. It says, Almost immediately, we stumbled upon our first major problem of our trip. Our very first day on the road, a wheel flew right off of our wagon. So, uh, one thing that was in the rising action, the wheel flew off. They had to fix that. Um, another thing that I see, again, you can be writing down whatever. If you want to pause the video, you can be writing down the things uh, that you noticed uh, as well. But the second thing that I see, there was an awful rainstorm. They lost two days. Um, the next problem that arose was the Brown, somebody uh, in the Brown family fell ill, or the whole Brown family fell ill, I guess that's what it says. Um, so, and they actually turned back and went home. Other things, you know, just, just different things like that. It's the rising action leading up to kind of the point of the story, which goes down to the paragraph where it starts with the wagon master. Uh, if you lead, go down to the end of that paragraph, try to follow me. The wagon master asked us to change our minds 
so on and so forth. And if you go to the end of that paragraph, it says, that is when we decided the best option was to remain here in Denver. I believe that would technically be the climax of the story. So in the exposition, it says they were trying to get to California, but because of all the struggles that they were encountering, uh, they decided actually to just stay in Denver and not go any further. Uh, that's kind of what I would say is the climax is leading up to that because they don't really go any further. They settle. It says he decides to get a job and everything, and um, they even find a permanent place where they can live. Uh, and that, I would almost say that that is the resolution, which is the next point and the next question. Uh, question five, what is something that is stated in the resolution? So again, I'd like you to just write something specific. You can write they found a permanent place to live. You can write uh, that they were glad that they were, weren't living in, they were glad that they were living in a tent besides a, co a covered wagon. He found a new job. He's going to go find a new job. That's in the resolution. Um, he sent his friend a letter. Yeah, he wrote a letter to his friend. All of that's just kind of settling the story down. There's no more to be told. And again, uh, the lesson is the last thing, arguably, in my opinion, one of the most important aspects of this. All of the other questions lead up to what can you learn from this story? He didn't make it to his goal, right? So what did he learn? Just in the, in the travel, in the journey, uh, stopping instead of going all the way to California. What can we learn from him and this, this story as a whole? I'm not gonna give you that answer, but I would like you to write, write it on the board, on the thread in RenWeb, what you think a lesson is that we can learn from this simple story. Um, hopefully that was clear. Um, hopefully the story was easy to read and easy to understand and the questions as well. Uh, this is basically what I want you to do on your test on Friday when you take it. Um, so please let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you just don't understand one part of, of the story elements so that I can um, be more clear about it. Um, but if you can define and explain, that's what I'm looking for you to be able to do, explain these elements as they relate to a story, then you will do just fine and it'll be really easy, okay? Let me know if you have questions and um, I look forward to reading your lessons from the difficult journey. <laughs>